Charlotte Eagles soccer team, which we're going to rebrand next week and rematch the team. So, yeah, yeah. so you're going to have major, is it major league soccer? It, it's going to be USL Pro, okay. um, which is the second division. And um, you know, hopefully, like we were saying, if you, if you do everything right, then major league soccer will let you come up and play ball with them if you write them an $80 million check, so, which I don't have. So. <laughs> um, but um, I think the Hounds have been here for this is, We just finished our third season. Third season, okay, okay. And um, I went to a game. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I, I didn't know anything about lacrosse other than I saw a lot of the, you know, higher income schools starting to get more and more interested in it and have, uh, they were fielding like, um, what is it, like uh, uh, clubs where they couldn't, you know, they can't say that they're Ardry Kill, their official Ardry Kill, but they had clubs where they were playing lacrosse and now a lot of schools are, are, are getting official teams that are part of the athletic program. Yeah. So this is a this is a really this is an up and coming sport and uh, what I was going to do is going to let it, I was going to turn it over to Mr. McPhillamy and let him talk about his you know his uh, his team and and you being a part of this community and, and ticket sales and, and any questions you guys think of okay uh, we'll have a question and answer session but we'll also talk about maybe something that we can do together over the course of the year with uh, the A you know we're A A A B day so. With those kids who are going to be watching this, um, something, some kind of special promotion we could do with them that will be unique and raise money and get the Charlotte Hounds uh, brand out there to people your age and hopefully families. So I'll turn it over to Philip. How's everybody doing? Uh, any of the cross players? All right, is that it? Any of ladies? Um, that's one of the reasons I really like lacrosse from a business perspective was similar to soccer, both men and women play. So um, it's, uh, you know, since the world's 50.5% women, you just as well have them be fans too. So um, I guess I'll start with a uh, little bit about me. Um, I've worked in sports ever since I graduated college. Uh, I started out doing three-on-three -three basketball tournaments and working those. I don't know if anybody's ever played in a Hoop It Up or a Gus Macker or anything like that. Those are fun. Um, I traveled around the U.S. putting those on. Um, then I went and did NASCAR for a couple of years and um, uh, NHRA. And then I went up and worked at the NBA. Please, please pardon the interruption. If you would, please place your recycling bins outside of your classroom door. We'll have someone coming by to pick those up. Thank you. And, um, and then I came down here and worked for the Charlotte Bobcats. And when Michael Jordan took over, uh, he fired me. And um, so we, my wife and I really like Charlotte. Um, and just so you know, like in sports, that's pretty typical. Like if the new management group comes in, they like to bring in their management group. So, uh, um, <coughs> Yeah, I was viewed as working for Bob Johnson, who was the previous owner, and they uh, shifted guys out, and um, that's you know, part of life, right? Uh, and um, uh, then, but we liked it here, so I was either going to go work for the Houston Astros, which I'm so glad I didn't do that, or uh, I had the opportunity to um, buy a franchise for lacrosse, Major League Lacrosse, and bring a franchise here. So I took a risk and brought uh, lacrosse here. And it's been really, really cool. We've had a lot of people come to the games. Um, uh, Mr. Riggs and I were just talking beforehand. It's a really tough sell. And I guess, you know, if we move forward and work on a project together, selling lacrosse, if you've never been to a game, we've only had one person that's played. Have you been to a Hounds game? Yes, sir. Good. So, like, it's easy for me to get people that play lacrosse to come to Hounds games, but there aren't enough people in Charlotte that play lacrosse. So, we have to get people that don't know much about lacrosse. So, not only do we have to sell people on the Hounds, but we have to sell them on the sport of lacrosse. And two-stage sells are really hard. Um, 
the uh, in, in any selling process, if I say, hey, let's go to a Panthers game, you probably all immediately have a vision in your mind of what a Panthers game looks like, what's going to happen while you're at a Panthers game, and that's an easy sell because you've already got a vision in your head of what the Panthers game looks like. Now we're just talking about price, like, okay, I might be interested in going, what's the price for me to go? For a Hounds game, if I say, hey, let's go to a Hounds game, you have no vision in your head of what a Hounds game looks like, what's going to happen. So we have to create that vision in people's heads so that they want to go. Then we can talk about price and everything. So um, two stage cells are always harder than, uh, than one stage cells. And we're still in the two stage cell process. So um, we try to get people to sample the sport. Uh, like, what's your name? Cole. Cole, like what, like for Cole, I want him to bring a bunch of his friends that don't play lacrosse. And then if they come, hopefully they'll have a good time and be like, that was really fun. I had a great time there. And then they'll come back on their own. So we're always looking for ways to get people to sample it, to come in, and we'll discount it deeply the first time so that we can get over that barrier of what's a Hounds game about. Um, and, uh, you know, but it's third season now. We grow the business a little bit each year. And um, and because of that business, we were able to, the Charlotte Eagles, has anybody been to a soccer game at the Charlotte Eagles? Um, they, um, uh, it was Major League Soccer's going to buy the league basically they're in and make it a minor league system. And uh, it was going to be too expensive for the current Eagles ownership to operate within that environment. So they're going to still exist. They're going to self-relegate down to what's called the PDL level, which is the next level down. And we're acquiring their rights. And we're going to relaunch the team next Wednesday um, at a press conference and um, start playing downtown where the Hounds play, which is Memorial Stadium. So um, that's... Uh, that's the plan there, and that should be pretty neat too. So it's uh, uh, pretty cool. Um, yep. What kind of uh, for Memorial Stadium? Memorial Stadium was built in 1936. Yeah, it was part. Yeah, part of the. Uh, uh, a lot of history, old stadium. I know it was. Uh, what kind of renovations did you? guys have to do before you started playing? We're going to do it. So for the Hounds, we haven't done anything. Okay. Um, the county actually got some insurance money because um, one of their, uh, it's old, so something collapsed and they actually got insurance money. So they got to tear down what collapsed and they're rebuilding the concourse where that was. We're investing $2 million to expand the field so that we can play soccer there. Right now it's too narrow to play soccer. So um, uh, we're going to put the money in to make that happen because, frankly, there's, we couldn't build a standalone soccer stadium downtown for $2 million. So uh, it's a reasonable investment for us to make to do that uh, for the soccer team. Um, it's been challenging, though. It's pretty interesting over there. It's, uh, it's a great old venue, but it is beat up. Um, yeah. like how long do you have to wait in line for concessions? Oh, I didn't really eat. I just went and watched. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The uh, but it's it's like there's only one concession stand that's big that serves everything, and it's um, there's a lot of work to be done if we ever do go major league soccer. It'd probably be about a fifty to sixty million dollar renovation there um, to to upfit that to make it for the top level of soccer. Has the um, has the success of now this might sound like a strange question, but has the success of Panthers and the Bobcats and the uh, Knights being downtown, has that kind of filtered down to Charlotte, I mean to the uh, Hounds? Has it I think so. You know, the, um, if you think about the uptown as a whole and you think back to Hugh McCall and, and um, the, the powers that be 20, 25 years ago, they made a decision way back when that they were going to revitalize downtown Charlotte uh, through investments in sports, arts, and culture. Uh, 
Um, that includes the museums that are down there. That in you know, includes the Blumenthal. That includes um, you know, lots of stuff. And they they put their money where their mouths was. So even beyond just the sporting events, there's so much the McGlone Theater. There's so much stuff that they've invested in downtown to um, to revitalize the the area to where it's a livable area. And now people walking dogs down there and walking yeah. around with strollers. It's a completely different, even than it was five years ago. So the vision that they had to revitalize downtown Charlotte, even though a lot of people were against it, and some people still are, um, it's worked. And uh, that's why they're spending the money to, to have the, you know, the rail line go up north to the university, and they're gonna spend the money to expand the streetcar line. All that's about making uptown a livable area that, um, that frankly, the you know under 35 crowd would find attractive because cities survive based on their ability to attract. It. Like when you guys graduate college, the city would want you to come back here. If you graduated probably five years ago, you would be like, I'm not really interested in coming back to Charlotte. I'm going to go someplace, yeah, you know, fun. I'll go to Atlanta or I'm going to go to New York City and. Um, and now Charlotte's actually in the consideration set for people as they graduate to come back because they think it's a fun town to be in. Um, and that's, that's part of what we're trying to do with the Hounds and with the soccer team is, is be part of that and help them make Charlotte a fun place to be for post-collegiate people that, that uh, help keep a town vibrant. Um, yeah, I think... Um I drive, I got a, you, know, you guys know I've got a second job, I drive limos and things like that, but I tell everybody that comes here, it's, I used to work downtown Charlotte, and it is a huge difference. I mean, everybody left at 5 o'clock. Yeah, it was a ghost. And you, 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 you can forget about weekends. There wasn't, unless church was going on or something like that, nobody came downtown. But now, I mean, Epicenter is just packed every weekend. Uh, and, and plus the high rises have gone up, and a lot of people are skeptical about how successful they were going to be. But it's brought up, I mean, a bunch of young people from all over the country looking for jobs here. They've come down here, moved down here with their companies and things like that. I mean, so it's a, it, it really it seems like a, young, a brand new young town. It is. I think that's exactly right. But it took a lot of investment and infrastructure <clears throat> to get to that point. Uh, and a lot of resistance. There was a lot of people said, "Yeah, you know, why are you building a basketball stadium? Why are you giving them a hundred million dollars to fix Panthers Stadium? Why are you doing all this stuff?" But it does help revitalize stuff, and then you increase the tax base, and um, it all—it actually, you know, on a net net basis, it works out over time. Instead of everybody moving out to the suburbs, and then you know, as soon as you bounce, you know, into the in the South Carolina and across the border, that money's not even staying up there. So it really deteriorates the whole, you might live in Charlotte as a metro, but the tax dollars aren't going there. So, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, if you look at towns like St. Louis, where the Ferguson stuff's going on, that's a, there's a divide there where you have East St. Louis and you have St. Louis and a lot of money left across the way. And, it, you know, it, uh, um, can create a bad situation if, uh, if, you know, if people don't watch out for the core, right? So. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah, you, what kind of sponsorships are, are you guys? What are your who are your main sponsors? Yeah, we sort of have two. Um, we have two lines of thought on sponsorship. Obviously, the hounds are small, right? So but we want to act like we're big, right? <laughs> so um, so we pursued at the very beginning all of the big sponsors, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Carolina's Healthcare, Ortho Carolina, um, and we really went after those guys because we wanted the optics of being big. We wanted the community support to be there. We have Coca-Cola, Duke Energy, so we have all the big boys on board, um, and um, that was key for us because we wanted everybody else to realize that these people were investing in the team and that it was okay for them to do that as well. Uh, and then we have sort of everyone else that comes in after that that, um, you know, that we really work on 
the you know what the what the package looks like. And now the great thing, the cool thing about sponsorship, and this is something that probably be if anybody goes into sports marketing or or any type of marketing, there's always borrowed equity. Um, so the only reason that somebody would want to sponsor us is because they want to borrow some of our brand image, right? So um, you've been out there, the audience is pretty cool and it's affluent, it's a good crowd. So they want to be, and they like the hound. So they want to show people that they're supporting the hound so that people will like them by default, right? Like, oh, we're hanging out with the cool people. So, um, but it also goes for the sponsors, right? So if uh, our top sponsor was Long's Dry Cleaners, that wouldn't be very cool, right? So it's like, and then none of the other sponsors would be like, wow, I really want my banner next to Long's Dry Cleaners. Right? But if you see a huge Bank of America banner out there and you see a huge Wells Fargo banner and then we go talk to the folks at the Whitewater Center, they're like, yeah, I want to be next to those guys. So there's borrowed equity not only from the hounds but from the other sponsors we have in. That's why we were so, at the beginning, so keyed on getting you know, all the major corporations in Charlotte in because then people want to be affiliated not only with you but with them. So. Um, that's, uh, you know, uh, anytime you think about marketing, you always have to think about what imagery you're borrowing from the other entity. And that's the same as it's the basics of an endorsement. You know, if I have Gene Simmons doing something for me, I'm trying to borrow his, you know, I'm trying to borrow his brand equity to sell my product. So, um, yeah, that's How hard was it to, uh, to get them on board? Receptive at first, or they were because um, largely we have to find people that are lacrosse fans. Right. So you have to find the right people within the organization. To it's a very tight community, the lacrosse community. Um, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's really um, so as long as you get an advocate for you, you can usually navigate it. So we just, it took a while for us to figure out who the advocates in each organization were. But once we were there, it was more of a community play than an advertising play. Yeah. So if you looked at it from a strictly commercial purpose, there'd be no reason for them to be there. But if they look at it from, I'm making an investment in Charlotte's future because adding the hounds to Charlotte will be a good thing for the city, right. that was really the pitch that we made to them, and that's really why they bought. What, um, I'm going to ask you, as far as like attendance, um, what, what's the, this, uh, from year one to, to now, how much has it picked up each year? Is it, I mean, because I've noticed a lot more people talking about it. It's been in the news, you know, a lot more, uh, there's been a lot more exposure. It seems, you know, it seems like it is growing. Yeah, our, our, um, our attendance was actually down year over year this year, but that was because we had three, we only have seven home games, and it rained on three of them. It oh. rained really bad. Um, so, uh, which really sort of sucked, but um, I mean, that, that's each one of those cost me a fair amount of money. But uh, the um, our average attendance on the nice days, we had our highest paid, um, paid attendance game ever this year. We had 5,300 paid, which is really good for yeah. It was our second game of the season, uh, which is really good for us. And um, above our average, we, were at, we average about 4,200 fans paid overall. We only count paid if you're there on a, a comp ticket or whatever. We have lots of sponsors, national sponsors, that have comp tickets. Um, Powerade's a national sponsor, uh, Avion Tequila, uh, Warrior. All these people have like local reps and everything, and they'll bring a couple hundred people to the game. Um, but that doesn't, that helps the league, but it doesn't help us. They get free tickets. So they buy stuff while they're there. But, you know, so they'll buy concessions, and we get a piece of that. Um, what's your, I don't know if you can really tell us this, what's, what's usually the, the cut that the hounds get from the concession? 20%. Okay. Yeah, that's and that's if you look at the like when I was at the Bobcats, we had actually two different deals. We had a deal in the lower bowl and we had a deal in the upper bowl. Um, so we actually had a stronger concession rate 
share in the upper bowl versus the lower bowl, where the ticket items were much higher in the lower bowl. Um, and then up top, we wanted the flexibility. So we actually signed a license with a company to manage the, the Levy restaurants, to manage all the, the sales of everything. So, but if you have a share, you can actually do a discount. So I could do like, hey, if you buy a ticket, um, you know, you have 50% off on a hot dog and a free Coke. Well, if in the lower bowl, you'll never see that deal in the lower bowl because my share is not good enough, right? I'd be actually writing them a check for doing that. In the upper bowl, um, because of the split, it was a 40% split in the upper bowl. Um, we had the capability to do that where it wasn't revenue negative. Um, and each one of those is different. Now, is that like normal for most the bigger uh, stadiums and arenas to have? Different shares. Yeah, I think uh, I don't know um, the specifics of each deal, but that's pretty typical. The other thing is you have to think of is that the upper bowl usually fills in last. Mm -hmm. So on the huge days, it's a uh, Levy wants to get their money on the lower bowl. It's higher revenue and it fills in quicker. So it's got a higher attendance rate. You might have uh, eighty-five percent you know, um, fill capacity down there during the season, where upper bowl you might only have, like, for the, you know, for the old Bobcats, I mean, that was, you could shoot a cannon through up there every once in a while, not even, but, um, so, yeah, so they, you know, the optics of it was really, they want to average somewhere, like, they're like, okay, here's the share we're willing to do, now let's figure out how we're going to get to that based on attendance that was a good question. <clears throat> Is it hard to like compete with the Knights for stuff like selling tickets? No, it's an interesting, um, we actually counter program to them. I think we only had one redundant game. Uh, so we actually looked at their schedule and said, hey, we don't want to own game when they're playing. Um, but the, uh, if you look across, I used to consult to all kinds of different sports teams. In cities, once people get used to going out, um, they go out more. So if, let's say, Atlanta was a city I worked in for a long time uh, with the Hawks and the Thrashers back when they had the team. Well, people only went out about 